Right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I have some like that much plan, but the internet here is a little bit iffy, so I'm gonna do my best, but uh, bear with me and I try to cut my path and then uh, make it work. Okay, so a little bit about myself. So I'm Nathan and I wear many different hats. I guess this thing doesn't necessarily work. Okay, so I'm gonna stay a little bit closer. Yeah, okay, so I wear a bunch of different hats and I was developed for many years. Also, an open source contributor uh, for over 15 years now, so I can know things. I'm co founder of Robusta, which does web based monitoring for Kubernetes. And I do a lot of DevRel stuff, so here's an example of a video I did with my grandmother, um, DevOps with Grandma Sue, where we talk about Kubernetes and explain in very non technical terms why it matters. Um, so, if you need to explain to your spouse or to other people what you do, then that's often a good reference. Now, outside of work, I'm also a crazy fat guy, so I uh, grow a lot of different vegetables, mostly tomatoes, grow a whole bunch of different stuff with my wife. And today I'm going to be talking about runbook automation. So I'm going to be talking about what runbook automation is, why you need it to make your life better, how it works under the hood, and assuming that the internet is okay, then you'll see live demos. If not, then you'll see uh, screenshots. So, Wait, before I go on, I'm just curious, is anyone, is anyone here using some form of run with automation in production today? Okay, so I'd love to hear from you guys afterwards. I'm also curious about what you guys do. And I also just want to see on the aspect ratio that this isn't cut off. Can you see the bottom of this? Okay, yes. One second, let me see if I can fix this. The aspect ratio is wrong. Is that better? Yep. Okay, perfect. So who here knows this other? Has anyone seen this before? Oh, yikes. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm about to be honest. Has anyone here seen this alert before? This is uh, an alert called QPod Crash Looping. It's part of the default side of alerts for Q Prometheus stack, so super common in there. And the, what replic automation is, is taking an alert like this, and then adding on context. So connecting that alert to dogs, to graphs, adding on knowledge about why an alert like that is firing, and sometimes even being able to fix an alert like that automatically. Now, when we speak about context, I actually want to give a non-technical example to show why context matters so much. So can anyone guess what this object is? Come on, guys. Here they go. Some scanner. A security camera? What did you say? Wally. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit like a robot, like Wally, some kind of cute robot, or something from Terminator. Okay, so to explain what this is now, I'm going to add on context. And this just shows how powerful and how important context is. So this is an object that you use when you work from home and your cat starts jumping all over your desk and you want to occupy your cat so that you can actually get some work done. And as soon as you see this object with the context, then it suddenly becomes apparent what this is and why it matters. But when you see another out of context, or when you see an object like this out of context, then you really don't know what it is and if it means something or not. So that's the goal of Rumble Automation, to add on that context. Now, I recently asked on LinkedIn what context we should gather for that if I showed you before. So I asked, I'm putting this in like terms that normal humans use now, not about context and alerts. I said, what's the first thing you do when you investigate this alert? And that's really like the same question, but phrased in the way people like actually think. And I got a lot of different answers. So being the daily driven guy that I am, I went and I went over all those answers and I summarized it and I counted up how many different times I got each answer. And let me go through those answers. So, two people say you should blame the DevOps team. One person recommended, uh, one person recommended running this command. Does anyone know what that command does? Okay, so for those of you who are even on the job, that uninstalls Kubernetes. <laughs> but then we got a bunch of serious answers too. So, Four people said you should run kubectl get events for the Kubernetes events, which are events submitted by the API server that give you useful diagnostic information. 
Four people said Yeshua and Kikel described, Kikel described poison events and some other stuff. And the overwhelming majority, so the, what you want to do when you have that alert, is you want to look at the application logs. So you should go and fetch the file logs, and you know why the file is crashing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take that alert and we're going to automate that process. So we're going to go and we're going to take that alert and automatically pull in those top logs, and you'll get it right there in Slack. So as soon as you get that alert, you'll have the context on why that alert is firing. Now this is a simple example, but one that we encounter every day. But you can also apply this concept to far more advanced things that we'll see later on. So let me give you a teaser for what this will look like, at, and you can get into that advanced Slack. And there, if you look carefully, you can see there at the bottom, if I know how to use this pointer thing, maybe not. But you can see there at the bottom, there are other labels and everything. And essentially, we're taking the metadata from that there, and we're taking the labels, and we're mapping it onto a Kubernetes object. And then all the magic, we're pulling in all that context. So the person who gets that alert doesn't get an alert and say, like, okay, here's an alert, good luck. But now you have the context, and you can see why that alert is fine. So now let's talk a little bit about Prometheus and learning architecture. So the way that it's normally working with Prometheus, and I'm sure there are people in this room who are far more experienced and expert in this than I am. So if I'm getting anything wrong here, I'm sure I'm giving some simplifications here. Feel free to come over to me afterwards. Um, but what we're going to do is, sorry, the way that things normally work is Prometheus issues alerts. Those alerts get forwarded to alert manager. And the alert manager has more advanced logic on top of that. For example, it groups the alerts it um, has a grouping interval, it uh, may, uh, may know some when notes are resolved, it does various different things. Actually, the resolving happened in Prometheus, but their manager has some magic around that too, I think. Um, and then finally, the other manager takes that alert, that set of alerts that we grouped it, and now it forwards those alerts by web hook to the destination that you receive alerts in. So you get alerts at the end of the day in uh, Slack, or in MS Teams, or in all these different destinations. Um, and some recently added support to Rust actually for. Uh, Cisco WebEx, so I guess there are people getting there in Cisco WebEx, which kind of surprises me. Um, so you get the alerts there in Slack. Now, we're going to change that architecture a little bit, and we're going to add in a conditional component. So one way that we can implement runbook automation, which is very popular, that's how we're going to do it, is we're going to add in an extra component here in the middle. So you have alerts that come from Prometheus, they go to Alert Manager, from Alert Manager they get sent now, not directly to Slack, through time as teams, they get sent to the runbook engine. The runbook engine takes that alert, it pulls an extra context, pulls in that context about what this alert is, what it means, maybe why it's happening, or even not being fixed. And then it sends that alert plus extra context now onto the final destination. So that's what we're going to do. And this is a good time to say what Robusta is. So Robusta is an open source project um, on GitHub, of course, and it contains two main parts. So the first is the runbook engine. That's the engine that takes these incoming events and then adds them in context according to a bunch of rules that you find in YAML. And then the second part is we've gone and we've gone over all the alerts in Kubernetes stack and all the other common alerts that people have because we all run Kubernetes, so we actually have, all have very similar alerts to one another. And we're taking those alerts and we're adding on these runbooks out of the box so that anyone who gets alerts would just get a good alert right now without needing to configure anything. And then that needs to have your developers, and people will probably use us because now they understand why they're firing. So that's our goal. Okay, so uh, Robusta is MIT licensed, and uh, please take a moment and scan that and uh, give us a star on GitHub that really helps us as a project and as an open source project that helps us spread awareness also about what we do. And uh, I will also say we have a bunch of community run books that are like going out and mapping stuff in Kubernetes stack and mapping out other common Kubernetes errors. Um, so we're doing our best to really get wide coverage, and this is one of the reasons why it's so important to us to be here today, to really also engage with the brother from Matthias community and speak about what we're missing and what content we should add on. And let me now show you how you set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the manager's configuration. We're going to add on the webhook receiver. We have more instructions for this online. Of course, the Prometheus stops are excellent and that cover this as well. And essentially, what we're telling now Prometheus to be precise, what we're telling the alert manager to do is we're telling the alert manager that when there's an alert, you shouldn't go and send it directly to Slack anymore. We're going to send that alert to the runbook engine. Now, the, tree, the next part is like kind of the hard part, right? Now you actually have to write the runbook engine. The runbook engine is this HTTP server, so it's getting all these alerts by HTTP over a 
And then you have to take those alerts, and you have to parse them, and you have to pull out the different contexts of the alert, and you have to like, uh, contact the API server and pull the logs and do all this other stuff. So this is the traditional way you can do it. You can write a bunch of code that runs an HTTP server and has like a whole bunch of analysis and different stuff to handle each of the different edge cases. And what we've done with the robust side is we're trying to make this really as simple as possible and to bring one look automation to the process. So to make that happen, we now turn this into YAML configuration. So when the alert reaches Robusta, Robusta then goes and it parses this YAML file, it looks up the alert that arrived in the set of rules, and it says, okay, for this given alert, how should I enrich it? What context is missing if this is an alert about crash impact? Or if you get an alert about a note that ran out of this space, what do I need to see as a person who's on call in order to solve that issue? And then that's where the broader community comes in, all the uh, community coverage, to really out of the box, give you all the stuff that you need to succeed at it and to succeed at the this monitoring. So here's the configuration. I'm going to go over the configuration now. So every automation, every runbook in Robust has three parts. There's a trigger. So that's the condition that's triggered in this runbook. In this case, it's the Prometheus alert from Q Prometheus stack that's called Q pod crash sweeping. The action is what we're going to do when that arrives. And the action here is we're going to pull them in the logs. And the sync is where we send the data. So we're sending the data here to stack, we send it to MS Teams, we send it to, uh, I guess it's Google Web Apps, we send it to Apps Genie, we do, we send it all over the place. I believe you can even send it to Datadog. Um, okay, so the last part then is I just want to say a word though that's maybe not obvious when you look at this the first time, but data is flowing through all of these. This is almost like a data pipeline. So if you look at this actually, then we're saying there's an alert here on Prometheus alert when the pod crashes. But data flows from that trigger into the action. So the action now, it says go fetch the dogs, but it knows who to fetch the dogs for. Because we're taking the metadata from that Prometheus alert that's there from the Kubernetes Prometheus discovery. And then we're using that in order to map that alert to a Kubernetes object. And then we can pull in the logs from that Kubernetes object. So this is actually like a, this is actually like a tight pipeline. Like the data passing through this knows that this alert is related to this pod. It knows the Kubernetes uh, object. It has all the Kubernetes context. And then you can very easily pull in the right data. And of course, this is customizable. Okay, so this is the part where we all cross our fingers. And I really hope that the Wi-Fi does not fail me. Um, I always like to say, like, especially when we don't sponsor events, like never sponsor the Wi-Fi. Um, especially if you're a company that develops networking equipment, never sponsor their Wi-Fi. Um, but we see the same companies doing that again and again. Okay, so I'm going to run this. I'm now triggering an example there, and I'm going to jump over here to stop. We can actually have old something in there. So let's see. I'm just putting a bunch of stuff, so we're not going to cheat too much. Hopefully, we won't cheat at all. And okay, here we got it. And this other is still loading, I think. So in just a moment, though. No, but okay, here we can see. So what we got is we got the Prometheus alert, and then Robust automatically pulled in the dogs for the pod that crashed. And we see that right there, the dogs for the crashing pod. And that's right there in the other south. And that's this. And the thing to emphasize is this is all configurable and there are rules and we have rules out of the box to really do like the right thing in most of the, the common alerts. Um, so it's not just about crashing pods, that just happens to be a very popular use case. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. That's the part where I do the live demo. I want to see more live demo because I'm still a bit worried about Wi-Fi, so I'm glad we got that done. And I want to speak now about three more advanced use cases. So first of all, let's generalize the concept. Now, the concept of runbook automation is not just about getting the events that come from, from Prometheus. It's a very popular use case that we see among our, our users, but it's not the only one. You could say, for example, um, we had someone say once, um, I have an ingress that's like crucial to the functioning of my cluster. And if anyone touches that ingress, I want to get notified. Or if anyone touches that ingress, it won't take some operation. Um, so you can actually do something like that very easily. It's the same concept. You have a trigger, you have an action, you have the same. So the trigger is someone modified that ingress. The action is okay, you want some data to show me exactly like the exact diff that they modified. And then the destination is Slack or MS Teams or wherever. So um, there's an open source project called Cubewatch that's fairly popular. Um, and the original maintainers left that, so we took over as the official maintainers now. Um, we're the official maintainers of Cubewatch. And we use Cubewatch under the hood as part of this run automation engine, so you can actually track any Kubernetes change 
And then you can get notified, you can even run different automated actions when different things happen in your cluster. So this is often very useful also if you want to do this sort of thing that's not really time series based, but you want to monitor discrete events. Like you might say, I want to monitor the number of crash of uh, like jobs that I failed. I actually care about jobs, Kubernetes jobs. It's like a discrete um, event that's happening, a job failed. And then you can also do one of automation or notifications around that sort of thing. Um, so this is very useful. And, uh, we maintain KubeWatch. We're actually about to release, I think today or tomorrow, a new version of KubeWatch that fixes a bunch of bugs. The first version to come out in a very long time. So that's exciting. Um, so that's one advanced use case. And then I want to speak about two more advanced use cases. So the second one is deeper insights. So you're not limited to just pulling in data like here are the alerts and connecting to the graphs and other stuff. You can actually apply that because each one of those automated actions we saw under the hood, each one of those automated actions is actually a Python function. So it's very easy to extend this yourself. And you can actually take all the knowledge